Uh, over on the right hand side, you've got a type of Boolean right now and an entity field. What is that entity field for? So if you pick an entity type, you can select what type of entity it is. Get rid of that too. So if I pick an entity. So you pick an entity for the argument, you're going to define what entity that is. Yeah. Okay. For the argument type instead of string, it's entity. And you pick what entity. So entity, and I can pick the type down here. Do want to call it in code? Or if you have an entity input, it's kind of tricky to how you pass it. So. so if you're doing an entity and it's an input string, you're going to be passing what record in that entity is one of the variables into it? Yeah. Yep. If you have that type in there, it won't let you add it to a workflow. It's going to only be called from code. Okay. I actually remember with, with this one, we were going to figure out why they wouldn't let us pick the action. In our workflow and that was why yeah i could have used that yesterday when i was trying to pass a entity into one and wouldn't go into workflow i got to figure that out <laughs> yep It'd be super nice if you could do that though it'll let you do an entity reference though right right it's not yeah. an entity yeah because workflows have a constrained set of uh, parameter types and it's like string, boolean, number, entity reference, and option set value, I think. I have mm -hmm. to look that up again, but it's it's not everything. Yeah. Okay, so my second topic. So we're doing an editable grid for a client. So I want to do the form today is because I actually had some stuff to talk about. So we're doing an editable grid and so they had a two fields, like two currency fields next to each other. One was like the original amount, and then another one was one they could update. Right. So if they wanted to, they could come change this one value to be different from the original amount, change them, and then if they decided they didn't like their changes, we added a button where they could go back and revert back to the original amounts. Oh, okay. That's cool. So with that in there, I wanted to make sure there's a way we could lock that original amount field so they couldn't change that. So does anybody have any ideas on how you would do that? Lock the original amount. So lock a lock a field on the editable in an editable grid, basically. Same way you lock it on a form. Yeah. 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 So if it contains oh. data, lock it. Right? Yep. yep. So if you have a business rule and have it on an entity, then it'll apply it to the editable grid as well. Really? So do you have to tab out though for the business rule to take effect? Nope. So the yeah. So normally, if you can do that, if it contains data, you want to just pick a field that is always going to be populated, like created on or something like that. And then, since that's always true, read only on the form as well. So everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so and then you'd have to do JavaScript on your forms and pull it back up. Yeah. If you had to do that. So it's added. That would have been something there. I would have had to look up instead. Oh no. So yeah, it's really only useful if you're fine with that field being locked everywhere, not just on the editable grid. So there are field is now locked. I suppose, does anybody know if uh, field security works on editable grids? It does. It will asterisk it out. Yep. Yeah. Because it's another option if you want to go that route. Yeah. And you got to worry about so, them being able to set it on create and stuff like that. So it makes sense on the, on the field level rather than the form level. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So that's it on that. That's pretty quick. What other uh, what other parts around this that uh, I see that you also threw in a, a field up there to do a calculated roll up um, from those? Yeah. So if uh, you know they hit that button that reverts it back, 
Um, then does that kick off the refresh, or did they have to still manually go and refresh it? Uh, yeah, so they'll hear this. Is there a, a, a way in a workflow to cause a roll up field like that to recalculate? There most certainly is. Yeah, if you yeah. have the MS, whatever. Dynamics workflow. workflow tools from Nemian Rasco has a uh, feature for that. Yeah. Oh, Custom cool. workflow step. I think I might get to the point where each new client, I just install that on. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's pretty <laughs> much where I am. In our case, though, I'm doing it on. When you save a record in here, it'll go and recalculate. Do the roll up fill and so they can. So it's just running on the update of any billing installment and then it'll roll up the total. Installment. Yes, it's on, on the grid. So in the grid, it's say there's an on save of the grid event we can use. Oh. So does it also work if they open the uh, the child record and, and save? Do you have it on there as well? Mm, nope. The on save grid event you just mentioned, is that in JavaScript only or is that? Yeah. Okay. Um, for the developers on that part, if you are refreshing a roll up field in JavaScript like that, just doing the calculate. It doesn't really show up on the form until you refresh. Hmm. So I found with this, if I did a, I don't know, I did it like a set, just a set time out for half a second or something before doing the calculation or before refreshing the form or something, then it, then it shows. So up. it'll do the calculation, but it, yeah, it doesn't actually show it or anything. And it doing that calculation, that's it's just synchronous, so you can like call it right after. Yeah, it's just a, or just add the action you call, okay. calculate roll up action or something. Can you do it with an await on an action then? Yeah. So then you wouldn't have to do. Yeah, but even if you do that, it doesn't. Oh, it's still. It's still, yeah. You can just refresh the form right after it didn't. That's it didn't work. Like, why are you sending it back that it's done if it's not done? What do I end up doing? I'll pull it up. Yeah, so I had to do it. I had to do it all inside of a set timeout for some reason. And then it showed up this time, which was strange. Okay, that's all I had on that. Any other questions on Derek stuff with actions and uh, editable subgrids? I have a question editable. about an editable sub subgrid experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to turn a, uh, a subgrid into an editable subgrid, and it kept showing me both, both the editable and the non-editable, right one on top of the uh, on top of the other, which I thought was weird. And as soon as I turned on the editable subgrid, not only did it show me both, but it cut off the slider bar, or it didn't cut it off. It just didn't have a slider bar, so I couldn't see the full width of the of the table so yeah picture this with the editable grid on top and then the uh, static grid on the bottom and no slider bar anyone ever seen that before if you remove that subgrid and put it back on did it still do that mm, i did not try to destroy the subgrid i i took off the editable control and it reverted back to a standard subgrid and and then it was fine so i could try that Sounds kind of like Destroy a cash issue. <laughs> Destroy. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, sounds like, like what issue? Cash. Cash. Oh. Got something okay. cashed? 
Yeah, you love. No, we can't. Okay, a couple good ideas there. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yep. Um, thoughts for next learning forum? 